Hey everybody, welcome back to the shop. Today we are going to look at the Polymaker poly dryer system and see if this system is actually capable of keeping our filaments dry. I have the massive issue that my filament is spread around all over the shop. Now this video isn't sponsored by Polymaker, they just send me this stuff for free for me to check out and see what I think about it. And if you're wondering why these two tops right over here are dripping wet, more on that later. So first of all, let's look at the packaging. So we can see that the packaging is actually pretty nice. Everything is made of cardboard and we only have minimal plastics that we have to throw away. Now right over here we have two heating units and we have about eight boxes to put some filament in. And I went ahead and I already dried all those filaments. Now I wanted to know if those filaments are really protected from moisture. And the only good way right here in Belgium is to uh, make abuse of the weather. <laughs> the weather is absolutely terrible right now. So I decided to uh, sacrifice a few boxes and put them inside right in the rain to see what is going to happen. And here are the results. The first box is some carbon fiber nylon from Eson and we can see that there is no moisture inside and we still have a relative moisture content of 23%. And in the other box we have some polycarbonate from Polymaker themselves. The carbon is still dry and we can see that there is a relative moisture content of 18%. I have dried eight types of filament. We have the nylon, we have polycarbonate, then we have some PETG, we have ABS, we have some more ABS, we have PLA, some more ABS and we have TPU. And we can already see that all of these boxes are pretty dry. They are underneath the 30% mark and there are a few of these boxes under 20% and those are the boxes that could handle the most of the heat. So this is the system that is actually going to dry your filaments and we can see that we have a nice charge all the way from PLA to polycarbonate. And the way we are going to use the power level is going to be these nozzles. We can also see that there are nozzle symbols right over here and when we press the M button we can toggle between the heat levels. Then we have a plus and minus button and this is to set your time and when we press the play button the whole system starts up and we can feel a nice rush of hot air. So the way this works is actually pretty clever. We have our box right over here and there is some PLA filament inside of it and underneath we have those rubber feet that we can pull off. You have to remove these feet in order to put the box on the system. Then we have to set it to the correct setting. This is PLA so we need one out of three nozzles and then we just push the play button and now the air inside the box is going to circulate get nice and hot and get rid of the moisture now a really cool thing about this system is this is partially closed system which means that when you put on your container it is as good as closed off now we have some venting right over here and over here and this is for the moisture to escape now little fun fact these holes are added after the fact they have tested this system without the holes on each side and they have confirmed that those holes are really not necessary. They are just there for the looks. So just the seams around this little container was enough for the moisture to evaporate. But because you also want something to look at, there are some holes on the side. Now assembling these boxes is going to take a little bit of a job. They are partially assembled, which means that the rolls are in, the toplet is one piece, but you will have to fill this meter with some desiccants. So I had to do this for all eight samples and I actually asked my wife to help me out and it was really easy to set this thing up. Now looking at the box, you wouldn't say there is a back and a front, but there actually is because there is a little bit of a slot right over here and this is for the wall mounting, which is what we are going to do next. We are going to do some wall mounting and make this actually not clutter up the table like it's doing right now. And then we are going to do some uh, test prints. We are going to do some printing and uh, we are going to print straight out of the box and see how this thing is actually working. So right now all the spools are hanging from the tube in the middle and I have found out that the tube in the middle is actually lower resistance than the roller bearings right down here. And the simple reason is that those metal rods, even though they are in a nice metal bearing, we have metal rods, the sides of the metal rod is rubbing on the sides of the plastic container, giving us more friction. So if you are going to put your filament in the tube in the middle, you will find that it is way smoother pulling out your filament and not when you put it on the rolls down here. You can do both. There is a little bit more friction down here and I think they could done a little bit of a better job 
getting these bearings in here with those little tubes. Those tubes are rubbing on the sides, giving more friction, but luckily there is a system where you can just hang it in the middle and that seems to work pretty well. And then another weird thing I found is that with every container you get, you are getting some PTFD tubing. Now this is not your regular 1.75 millimeter tubing, which is probably more of a two millimeter out diameter and a 1.9 inner or 1.8. This is uh, about double it. And then we have a very short amount of it. So I'm not sure if you are going to put it in the hole right over here or in the hole right there. There is not a lot of room for your printer with this tubing. I would have much preferred this to be at least double the size. All right, enough rambling. Let's put some hooks on the wall and get this system floating. back we have a few of these hangers right over here and you can see that we have used some gray and have tried to use actually some silk-ish color changing PLA it didn't work at all so this is the Ace Adity PLA this is some kind of a silk and uh, yeah it was really clear to see that these steps right over here so where this thing is sliding through this is pretty stiff and this is a pretty tight fit. So this filament wasn't really handling it. I can just snap it off with a little pull like this. This has very weak layer adhesion and this wasn't going to work for this system. So no silk PLA for this thing because this thing actually needs some force to be inserted. Now I only wasted one day, but still we have some cool looking uh, thingies right up here and now we are going to put them on the wall and then we finally have a final resting place for these boxes Okay, so I mounted two of these boxes on the wall. I think it looks great This is just a wall. I'm not using right now So this is great storage space for all the filament dryer boxes The only problem I see is when I'm going to start hating these tops on the wall that I will be stuck with a lot of holes in it But uh, I can always patch it up with some more foam panels, right? <laughs> seven of the eight boxes hanging on the wall because realistically I'm always going to use at least one box to put on a printer for review or because I just need it. Really neat system. The only thing I figured out is trying to release it right now is going to be a huge pain but a little stool will help me. I really need a stool for the whole print corner so it is absolutely not a problem but make sure if you're hanging it up that you don't hang it up too high because right now I cannot reach it anymore. <laughs> But it's not a problem, it's okay. Also a little side note, we can see these boxes have been dried for at least a few days now and they all stay consistently dry. We also tested it in the rain, we could see that there is absolutely no moisture getting into these boxes so they are super airtight as long as you put in those little grommets right over here and right over here. But it really looks like we have actually a system right now that is able to keep my filament dry and stored away for me to use when I have to do a review because these are the most common filaments that I use to do all our reviewing purposes because right here next to me is sitting a box that is from Chidi and uh, yeah I think this will be oh, such a good printer honestly I think Chidi is right on track with the printers this one is looking absolutely amazing and we are going to use these boxes when we are going to do our first look. Enough rambling, the only thing I want to do is open up this box and see what the meat and potatoes are of this thing. So we can see that actually everything works pretty well. Now it's time to see what the meat and potatoes are of this little box. We can see there are four screws on the back. Let's try to unscrew them and see what we're working with. Another thing I want to note is that this little box 
is uh, powered by 24 volts. It is consuming about 68 watts. It is very low power consumption and it is because we are using an actual closed ecosystem. The air is being recirculated and it is going to speed up the heating time by quite a lot. If we are looking at this dryer, we can see it is going to pull air from underneath. It is going to blow it over the spools and then it's going to vent out at the top here right at these holes so this is a very low efficiency design it is always going to pull in fresh air heat it up and then heat up the chamber to vent out the moisture and this is actually using a closed ecosystem and we have those little holes for the moisture to escape like i said these holes are more of a gimmick just the seal right around this box uh, seem to be enough but they have added these holes just because they could. I am really interested if there are some uh, hidden screws. Right now I don't feel any hidden screws. There could be some beneath this pads but yeah let's start with just unscrewing it. So like I said we have four screws holding the complete design together and this is the last one and I'm going to try and gently pry it open and we can see that this is actually opening up the complete assembly. And I think this top is going to release from everything else. And yep, there we go. These are the meat and potatoes of the poly dryer. Opening the box, we can see we have a very intricate design. It is pulling air this way. So this is going to be the air intake. Then we have some guiding path with the fan that is going to slot in right here. So this is the fan and this will sit on top of it. Then it's going to heat it up from what it looks like a very small PTC element and then it is going to vent it outside of here and then it's going to circulate in the box getting back in the beginning and it's going to do this over and over again. At first thought I didn't think there was going to be a probe inside but if we are going to follow this brown lead we can see that the actual probe is right over here so there is intelligence in this board to measure how hot everything gets so it can turn on and off this little PTC element. In terms of serviceability, I don't think this is going to be a great design to change out parts. This PTC element is probably going to be the first thing that is going to crap out and I don't see a really good way to change this thing out. It is mounted however with a few screws so I think you can pull this complete assembly out and replace it with a new one. But right now I'm not sure they are going to provide any new parts for this system. So then we have our DC input. It is going to pass this switch so this switch is going to directly cut off the power before it enters the board. Uh, probably somewhere right over here. So this looks to be a very efficient and interesting design. They put a lot of effort into this thing to make it work together with the boxes and all of that. And of course, then we are getting at the last point and it is going to be pricing. So the pricing right here in Europe, it's a little bit hard to get your hands on it because Polymaker doesn't sell directly to the consumer. They are using a third party, like for instance, 3D Jake is going to be a big one for Europe. And then we have one, two, three, three, dot nl and that is also going to be a great retailer and then there are a few other ones that are going to try and sell it so now the official pricing for this box right over here so this is going to be complete you will get a box and you will get a heater right now for europe is going to be 19.69 euros and if you want to buy those boxes separately like i have hanging seven of them right there on the wall you are going to pay an extra 35 euros so to copy my complete setup having two heaters and then eight boxes to combine them together is going to cost you uh, very close to 400 euros 390 and a little bit more than that right here in europe it is pretty expensive not going to lie this is a very high step to put your feet in it is going to be a very expensive ecosystem however that being said flexibility that you're getting with those boxes is absolutely amazing we can see that the design is very well thought through the heater system is really nice we can see that these nozzles right over here actually works the lowest is going to be the one nozzle which is going to be for your PLAs and that is uh, right around I thought it was uh, 45 degrees then we have the two nozzles which was about 51 to 52 and then we have the three nozzle one it is going to be 55 and upwards and if you're done you're just seal it up with these two steps and hang it on your wall it has been a month and there is one more observation i have that i want to share with you so this right here is how i am using it so i'm using a bowden tube into my poly dryer box straight into my printer which is going to be the gd plus four 
then there is something like a lever you can push to snip off the filament so I can just pull away the box. These are the filament boxes that I have used and I just snipped off the filament and leave it hanging. So what we can see is the moisture content is going up and we can see that the desiccant has completely discolored. The same is going to be true for this one. Uh, this one is a TPU one. This is also discoloring. Then we have this box right over here also with some filament dangling right over here. This one is also discoloring and we can see that the moisture content is going up. The only thing I want to say, if you're lazy, just like me, you just snip off the filament, you let it hang right over there. And I think these boxes have been there for uh, close to a month or more. We can see that after a month, the desiccant inside isn't enough to keep it dry. So you really want to close up those boxes. If not, all these boxes, or uh, probably half of them, will need to be re-dried in order to get them back at the shape they need to be for some proper printing. So this is just a little side note. If you're lazy like me, you can expect that those boxes and even with that very tiny hole up top with the filament hanging out is still big enough for moisture to get inside, ruin the desiccant and ruin probably your filament. Also, we could see that the pricing right now for those poly dryer boxes are actually pretty good. They have dropped the prices quite a lot. So if you don't want to pay 20 euros for a complete top like this, there are also DIY options for you now available. I will drop some links down below to keep it more affordable but honestly only I think it's going to be 22 euros for one box I think it's worth it it's an all-in-one solution you don't have to fiddle around it is just a very nice thing to hang up right over here the only thing I can say I have a big gaping spot <laughs> yeah I'm probably going to get some more because I'm really running out of uh, boxes to dry and I'm constantly switching my filaments just because I am just doing so many weird and cool stuff these days that uh, yeah, even owning these eight boxes right up there just isn't enough anymore. So probably going to hang some more of those boxes on there. All right, so that's going to be way more than enough info for right now. Uh, thank you so much for watching. I also want to thank my members, these guys right over here for supporting the channel and guys, if you like the video, make sure to subscribe, give me the big thumbs up. If not, that's perfectly fine. And I see you in the next one.